Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the vlog. This is episode number 10 and it's a special one because we're with none other than <laughs> Johnny Vibes himself. We're out here for the GPI Awards and I think he's nominated for Personality of the Year, right? Yeah, so we're about to head over there. Unfortunately, the room wasn't ready, so we're hanging out at the bar right now just waiting to uh, get us sorted and anyway there should be a lot more fun coming tonight I'll check in with you guys in a little bit come on man we're late Alright guys, I found another fan yep. and I wanted to ask him. Yep. What happens if you're all loosey-goosey having a sandwich at the table? See, here's the thing. What you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna convey information. <laughs> when you're at the table, you convey information. And there's a video of me playing high stakes poker when I was eating a sandwich. But don't forget, I lost about two million dollars on that show. And guess what I learned? <laughs> no more loosey-goosey eating a sandwich. No sandwiches. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is episode number 10 and it's a special one because it covers a trip to Las Vegas. I just took with Johnny Vibes and if you guys are wondering how that happened, let me give you a really quick backstory. Essentially what happened is Johnny got nominated for an award at the GPI Awards, which is a poker award ceremony that happens every year. He gets to bring a plus one and his wife couldn't make it. so. He decided to bring a subscriber instead, which in and of itself is just such a cool gesture, I think, to uh, involve his subscribers in a way to be a part of his life. But anyway, we entered the giveaway, got lucky enough, and we won. So I was able to join Johnny this weekend for a night in Vegas, a word ceremony, we played some poker, we went out, and uh, yeah, this is an episode to cover all that, and let's just get started. This was a pretty awesome experience. I got to meet a ton of cool people at this uh, event. Daniel Negreanu, as you guys saw, Phil Helmuth, Alex Foxen, Justin Bonomo, and just a ton of other uh, figures in the poker communities. I know I couldn't film too much while I was in there, but hopefully you guys got a glimpse of what that was like and just the vibe that was going on at the Poker Ghost Studios. Following the awards ceremony, we decided to walk a little down the street and head into the Aria, where we had some drinks with Brad Owen, uh, a vlogger named Marley, you guys might be familiar with her, Johnny obviously, and a few other people. It was a really good time, and I've actually never been to this bar at the Aria, it was called Javier's. If you guys are ever in Vegas looking for a place to hang out, I highly recommend it, it was a lot of fun and just a good time. I didn't film too much, obviously, because I was just enjoying the uh, experience, hanging out with these people, having a good time. Anyway, after a few hours of hanging out at the Aria, Johnny and I decided to head back to the room, change out of those uncomfortable dress clothes, and head downstairs for some super intense $1, $2, no limit Texas Hold'em. So it's time to jump into some hands, and I hope this goes without saying, but just in case, these are not extremely educational or super in-depth. We were just looking to hang out in Vegas, we were a few drinks in, and just wanted to have a good time uh, playing some poker together. So bear that in mind as I share these hands with you. Oh, and by the way, quick disclaimer, as soon as I sat down at the 1-2 tables, the management from Caesars Palace actually recognized me and asked me real nicely not to film anything at all. So footage from the table is limited. I don't have a lot of the usual hole cards that I do right next to my face during hand histories, but 
You guys are just going to have to bear with me. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into these hands. Alright, in the first hand, there's one limp, and we look down at 8 6 of diamonds on the button. I raise it up to $12, the big blind makes the call, and the limper gets out of the way. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes 10, 9, 8. Two clubs, one spade. He checks, and I think I want to throw this into my checking range. There's no need to blow up the pot here, and getting check raised would suck. So I check it back with decent showdown value, see what develops on the turn. Turn's pretty good. It's another 8, but it brings another flusher on board. This time the big blind leans out for $15, and I could go either way here with a call or a raise. I think there's merit to both, um, mainly being that if you raise, uh, you charge all his draws, which he could have a lot of on this type of board. But the merit to calling is that if he's stabbing with a lot of bluffs, you keep all of those in there and he's likely to continue bluffing away on the river. So. Like I said, I could go either way. This time I like to raise it to $50. He thinks about it for a while and folds. So we take it down and move on to the next hand. The second hand is probably the most interesting from the session, uh, or at least as interesting as you can get from a one, two, uh, kind of buzzed, uh, no limit session. So under the gun opens to $6, I 3-bet to $25 from the hijack with ace-king of clubs. The button makes the cold call, folds to the original razor, and he makes the call. So we're going three ways to a flop. We all started the hand with around 300 or 350 so there's decent money left behind uh, to navigate this 3-bet uh, multi-way pot. Anyway, the flop comes king-8-4, uh, rainbow. Under the gun checks, I bet $30, no need to go too big here on such a dry board. The button calls and the under the gun player folds, so we're heads up to a turn which is an ace, but it brings the second spade on board, so we improve, we for sure want to be betting here every single time. I make it $90 to go, and the button doesn't think for too long and makes the call, so pretty big pot for 1-2 developing here. We're heads up to a river, which is the jack of spades. So it completes some pretty random straight draws aside from a uh, queen ten of spades, which is obviously a royal now, and it completes backdoor flush draws. Aside from that, I don't know that there's too much we should worry about. So in the moment I checked, but I think I actually prefer a bet here because if we're checking with the intention to call a bet and we don't think it's going to be a bluff, because you shouldn't have a ton of bluffs here, then I think I like just putting the money in myself. Um, obviously, you can check to induce a bluff, but if you don't expect your opponent to uh, be bluffing and you do expect a value bet, I just prefer to uh, bet myself so he can't check it back. Um, anyway, as played, I checked. I don't love it. He bets 200. We only have 220 behind. And I think about it for not too long. Uh, I expect to lose some percentage of the time, but for sure not folding. So I make the call and we get shown King Jack, which it kind of tilted me to be honest, because our opponent made a mistake by betting that on the river. He should just be checking that back a ton. But if he had checked it back, we would have missed a lot of value from a hand that could have called us. So it was a mistake there on the river, but as played, we collect the pot and move on to the next hand. All right, so things are going pretty well here at Caesars. And uh, then this hand happened. I opened pocket queens under the gun to $10. The button makes the call, the small blind makes the call, and the big blind min raises to $20, which I found fairly interesting, but okay. Action's back on me. I make it 100 to go now. The button folds. And now the small blind who originally called my $10 goes all in for, I think it was like uh, a little over 200 or so. Now the big blind who min raised initially folds, like right away. Action's back on us, we're obviously not folding. I make the call and uh, we get shown pocket aces from the small blind. We lose a pot there and it, for sure, I'm sure it's just random one, two shenanigans. But how suspicious does it look when the small blind and big blind are talking the entire session and then this hand develops? 
In the next hand, there's an early position player who was extremely tight. I haven't seen him open any hands and I'd only seen him limp a few. Uh, he opens to $15 and we look down at queen 10 of spades on the button. So I think this is a great hand to call with because although we're behind pretty much 100% of the time, uh, we have extremely good implied odds being that his opening range is extremely nutted and should we connect with the board and make our hand, most of the time I think we'll be getting paid from this player type. So I make the call, although it's a pretty big open, and everyone else folds. So $15 from each of us in the pot. Here we go, heads up to a flop, which comes jack, nine, four, with two diamonds. He continues for $25, which I expect him to do pretty much every time. I happily make the call here with an open-ended straight draw and the turn is a beautiful offsuit king. So the reason this offsuit king is such a great turn, aside from the obvious fact that it gives us the nuts, is that he turns a lot of top sets with this card, and if he has a hand like pocket aces, he still shouldn't be too afraid of anything. Um, if he has queens, it'll shut down the action, obviously, to some degree, but we also have a queen in our hand, which makes it a lot less likely that he has pocket queens. Um, anyway, he continues for, I think he bet $80, uh, or maybe $85, i am not too sure, I don't remember, I just remember it being around a pot size bet, and he only had around $150 behind, so I stuff it in there, he makes the quick call and shows us pocket kings, I immediately turn over the straight, and unfortunately the river pairs the board, but good news is, right around this time we get called to switch tables to... Johnny Vibes table, he was playing 1-2, but they weren't able to get us in at the same table until like the end of the night. All right, so now we're playing with Johnny, and unfortunately I was not able to get almost any playable hands in like the one hour that we got to play together. Pretty much the only hand of note that I got to record with Johnny was the following. I'm in the straddle with 9-6 off suit. Johnny raises under the gun to 15. Middle position player makes the call and I make a pretty loosey-goosey eating a sandwich type of call. Uh, under normal circumstances, I'd be folding this obviously, but I think it's fine here. Try to mix it up, have some fun. So I make the call and obviously my genius decision pays off when the flop comes 10, eight, seven. So we flop it straight right away. I check, Johnny checks, middle position player bets $40. I put in the check raise, I make it 110. Johnny gets out of the way and the middle position player snap goes all in for, I think it was like 500 or, I mean, he covered us, so you could have a ton of two pair uh, sets, even like pair plus open ender or whatever. So I make the quick call and unfortunately this time we do get shown the bad news. Villain shows us Jack nine, so we're drawing dead to a chop, which doesn't come. So we get felted and uh, yeah, that pretty much wrapped up the session for us. Johnny cashes out with a $28 profit. And how cool is it that a guy can be uh, on live at the bike the previous night playing $7,000 pods? Revalue it on the river. Holy cow. And then the next night, having a blast playing 1-2 No Limit in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Living the dream right there. Yeah, we're in for 300 and in about two hours, we're out for that much, that many dollars. So we decided to head back upstairs, try to get some sleep before heading home the next morning. I wanted to say a quick thanks again to Johnny for doing this uh, giveaway. I had a great time. Uh, I think he had a good time as well. It was cool getting to know one another. And it was also pretty cool for uh, the vlog, obviously. So also I wanted to say thank you again to everyone who's been supporting this channel, who watches these videos. Those of you guys who like the videos, that actually really helps the channel grow. Everyone who's subscribed, everyone who's said hi to me in uh, poker rooms. I think it's crazy. People are starting to come up to me and say what's up. I just think it's awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Stay tuned, subscribe for more. I'm working on the next video, which is gonna be the meetup game in Hollywood Park with Andrew Nimi and Brad Owen. So the next episodes should be uh, pretty fun as well. 
And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Good luck out there. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. How did one two go last night, man? We, uh, I won like, you know, $28. How'd I do? Um, you know, a little play bad, a little run bad here and there. <laughs> oh, nuts for a second, nuts. What are you supposed to do, man? <laughs> we'll see you guys in Palm Springs, right? Palm Springs, let's get it. Let's go.